Hello there. Today I'd like to talk to you about one of the greatest metal bands of all time. Slayer! Slayer is one of the most excellent bands, not only in metal, but really, I mean, they're just so influential um, across the board as far as music goes. Um, they're in the horror category, so for a lot of people, they won't even give them a try. Um, and I understand that point of view completely. I myself, I'm not really into horror myself, but Slayer's lyrics and Slayer's music and just the way they put things together, I mean, it's just so undeniably great. And... Um, I absolutely love just about every single thing that they've ever done with the exception of one album, which I'll talk about in a minute. So here I'm going to rate what I consider uh, to be the best Slayer albums. I'm just going to rank them from the worst one to the first one. I'm not going to do any live albums. I'm also not going to do um, the uh, Undisputed a uh, Attitude uh, album, uh, only because that's mostly covers and, uh, you know, it doesn't, doesn't really count. It's kind of a cover album. So <laughs> anyway, uh, without further ado... Here are the best Slayer albums of all time, 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 time. So starting off this list is what I would say is Slayer's worst album. World Painted Blood. Yep, this is their worst one in my opinion. Um, I, I don't think, you know, I mean, it isn't as bad as, you know, say every now and then a great band does a bad album, like Metallica and Megadeth, and man, when they do a bad album, it's really, really bad. I mean, this album is still good, you know, it's still a good metal, metal album, you can bang your head to it and stuff, there's nothing really wrong with it, but it just doesn't, it just doesn't capture the greatness, you know, that other Slayer, uh, albums, uh, catch, so yeah, this one's on the bottom of my list. Next up on my list is 2006's uh, Christ Illusion. Um, you know, this this album wasn't a bad album, but again, it was just kind of a, a kind of a backward slide for them. I mean, uh, they had done uh, God Hates Us All right before this, which is one of my favorite Slayer albums, and their drummer Paul Bostiff was just absolutely crushing it back there for Slayer. I mean, I remember when they first got Paul Bostiff, I was a little bit worried, you know, that he wouldn't be as good as Dave Lombardo when they got him on Divine Intervention, and then he shows up, and and I actually like Paul Bostiff's playing better than Dave Lombardo's, and so when they went back to Lombardo. I mean, the album is still good, the writing is still good, but I, I just feel like they lost a little bit of their edginess that they had previously, so, yeah. Uh, this album's kind of uninspired, kind of just their old feel, rehashed and stuff like that. Uh, it's good, you can bang your head to it, but, uh, you know, doesn't really make it into the top Slayer albums for me. So next up on my list is 1983's Show No Mercy. This is Slayer's first album. <clears throat> and uh, when it came out in 1983, I mean, this album was like, you know, I mean, one of the he heaviest albums, you know, out in existence, you know. And it was right up against Metallica's Kill 'Em All that came out in the same year. Honestly, I like Kill 'Em All a little bit better. Um, it's it, That album seems to be a little bit more composed. And Show No Mercy's got some excellent Slayer classics on it, and it's definitely some of the greatest music ever for its time, but but the album lacks a little bit of focus, and you can tell that the, that the bandmates are just a little bit immature and still trying to figure out who they are musically and stuff, so it's definitely a cool album to have in your collection, but uh, yeah, it's not one of my favorite Slayer albums. Next up on our list would be uh, Seasons in the Abyss. Um, Seasons in the Abyss uh, from 1990. A lot of people like this album, and definitely this this is a great Slayer album. It's kind of in the middle for me. You know, it's not really one of their best albums, but it's not like their worst album. It's just like kind of real basic, normal Slayer. There was something happening to bands in 1990. Just about all the metal bands started getting more commercial sounding. And even though Slayer technically didn't get more commercial sounding, I don't know. This album still feels compromised to me just a little bit maybe it was just all the airplay that they got on mtv back back in the day remember when mtv used to play music guys that was awesome um yeah so uh, yeah slayer seasons in the abyss good album but you know slayer's got some better stuff uh, next up on my list is 1998's diabolus and musica 
Yes, that's right. I put this album above Seasons in the Abyss. This is a much maligned Slayer album. There's a lot of folks who don't like this album. I mean, I, I talk to Slayer fans all the time who like who like put this album at the bottom, and I don't know what planet they're on, dude. This album is awesome. It's uh, you know their previous albums before this, they'd been very concentrating on like you know speed picking and like you know double time drum beats and stuff. And this this album, you can really feel that they're like they're like we got to do something different and they pull it off man they, they did like a groove metal album basically like you know with almost like a rap kind of feel to it and it, they crushed it they absolutely crushed it this album is a masterpiece for me you, it, it's the kind of album you have to listen to from start to end and think of it almost more like a movie but if you do it's a, it takes you on a wonderful roller coaster ride through through head bobbing grooves and riffs and, and Tom Murray is excellent singing and, and not to mention Paul Bostiff's back there on the drums and that guy is a rhythm master he's got so much feel and groove i love this album and you should too if you don't like this album give it another try dude i'm telling you this album's great all right so next up for me is 1994's divine intervention this was uh slayer's first album uh with paul bostiff on drums instead of uh, dave lombardo and uh at the time it was it was controversial because dave lombardo had you know i mean he was he's a great drummer in his own right i mean and some of the stuff that he played on rain and blood and south of heaven was just classic classic drumming i mean if you wanted to be a metal drummer you listened to dave lombardo for a little while and tried to figure out what he was doing and did something similar at least back then he did and and so Bostov shows up, and we're all like, oh, I don't know if this guy's going to be any good. And oh man, he comes in with these crazy grooves and these crazy rhythms, and his fills are tight and killer. And Divine Intervention, when it first came out, I was reluctant to give it a try, and I tried to find a reason to not like it. But this album has absolutely grown over time. Every time I listen to it, I'm like, yes, I'm so glad I put this in. Especially this first song, Killing Fields, man. It's just coolest drum beat weird rhythm thing that they got going on ever it's pure rage it's pure slayer awesome album okay so rocking down our list here next up surprisingly is slayer's newest album repentless um you know, ever since uh, Jeff Hanneman passed away, I've kind of, I kind of felt like Slayer got back into things a little too quick and didn't seem to take any time to grieve. And I love Jeff Hanneman. He was like one of my favorite guitar players of all time. I mean, he's just such such a beautiful mind on the guitars over there. And you know, when he left the earth, it was like, wow, bummer, dude, Slayer, man. And then they came out with World Painted Blood, which, is, as anyone who knows me knows, I dislike that album. I think that album kind of sucks. And so. When Repentless came out, honestly, I didn't even want to listen to it. I was like, eh, whatever, Slayer, you know. And, uh, and so one day, I, you know, was looking for something new to listen to, and I figured, eh, what the heck, I'll give it a try. And boy, am I glad I did. It turns out this is one of their better albums. They they really got their groove back, and for old timers, they can still do it, man. It's better than the uh, than the Metallica comeback, I'd say. It feels more authentic. It feels more real, which is pretty normal for Slayer. They always feel authentic and real. That's one of the things I love about them. Um, yeah, so Slayer, Repentless, man. This album's pretty good. Give it a try. All right, so next up on our list is the classic 1985 album Hell Awaits from Slayer. Uh, this was their second album, unless you count the Haunting the Chapel EP, which, I'm sorry, Haunting the Chapel has three songs, dude. It's not a full album. It's more of a singles collection or something. And not to mention, you can get those songs on the Show No Mercy remake. So, anyway, um, so Hell Awaits, their second album, um, is where Slayer really kind of starts to discover who they are, I think. They sound, they sound way more mature than they did on Show show no mercy their songs are well more thought out and composed and like you can just tell that they're really kind of starting to discover their destiny and their calling of who they're going to be as one of the most incredible metal bands that ever existed and uh, there's some super classic songs on here like at dawn they sleep is probably one of their greatest songs it's like kind of underrated and not really talked too much about hell awaits is killer uh kill again is excellent um necrophiliac is great crypts of eternity is great. Actually, this whole album's great. Um, the, on, the only reason it doesn't end up way up at the top of the list is, is because there's albums that are better than this, and um, this album, you can really see
see they're about to do Rain and Blood. This is like, it's almost like the prequel to Rain and Blood. So yeah, Hella Waits is awesome. Definitely listen to Hella Waits if you've never listened to this one. Next up on my list is one of the most incredible albums of all time for several reasons. Slayer, God Hates Us All. Uh, this album... This album's got a story for me. Um, so basically, you know, we're in the 90s, and I don't know if for those of you who are alive in the 90s, the 90s were great. Everybody was having a good time. Everyone was partying down. Everybody was happy. Even Israel and Palestine were making friends with each other. Everything was going great. And it looks like, wow, everything's going to be okay now and stuff. And then 9-11 happened. And ever since that day, everything's changed. 9-11-2001. I'll never forget it. While terrorists are flying airplanes into buildings, killing thousands of people, unless you believe the government set it up, but either way, it's creepy. Um, Slayer's album, God Hates Us All, comes out on that exact day. So as we're watching the news reports and stuff, in between, I'm listening to the brand new Slayer album, which is aptly titled God Hates Us All. And I remember being totally freaked out, you know, from like the the book of Revelations and the Bible and also the prophecies of Daniel, if anyone's ever read that kind of stuff. You know, it almost seems like, holy smokes, the end of the world really is happening. And oh my God, the, you know, the way to death is wide and the path to life is narrow and most of us are going to die because God hates us all. And all the lyrics are brutally about like how Americans think we're all safe in our cardboard prison and our asphalt wasteland. I mean, those are... Excellent lyrics that Tom Araya wrote. This album is absolutely great when you put it into context of it being almost a reflection of the turning point from how things were kind of good in the 90s until this like eternal war on terrorism that never seems to end. And like, who is the good guy and who is the bad guy? Can anyone even tell? I mean, <laughs> this world is messed up and Slayer God Hates Us All perfectly reflects that. Okay, coming in at number two on our list, 1988's South of Heaven. I absolutely love this album. Honestly, in my heart, this album's number one. Um, the only reason it, it's not number one is because the other album <laughs> uh, just, just beats it out just by a little bit in a historical context. But for me, South of Heaven was really <laughs> the album that solidified my love of Slayer. Um, I, had, I had the tape in my Walkman, and I would walk home from my high school every single day. It was about a 40-minute walk or so. I'd throw in Slayer, South of Heaven. I'd listen to the whole thing every day in my walk home. And uh, it's, it's basically the sequel to Rain and Blood. You know, it's got everything good that Rain and Blood had, except it's slowed down just a little bit, and the song composition is just a little bit more expanded a little bit. You know, and so it's like a, it's almost like a Rain and Blood, like, kind of grew up and got a little more mature or something like that. But... Uh, Man, there's some great tunes on here. It's got the greatest anti-abortion song ever written, Silent Scream. Um, it's also got a, another a wonderful song called Read Between the Lies, which is essentially similar to the Bible's Matthew 23, you know, basically telling people, hey, man, just because some guys show up in some robes and say they love God, don't believe them. You don't know who these people are. They could be trying to trick you. <laughs> Which they're totally right, you know, and uh, yeah, this is, this is a great album, there's some great lyrics all over it, there's mandatory suicide and behind the crooked cross, you know, about the Nazis and stuff like that, and uh, you know, and uh, yeah, this is, this is a great Slayer album, one of the greatest of all time, I'd have to say, Dave Lombardo's drumming is absolutely perfect, in fact, this is Dave Lombardo's best album for me, even though he's not as fast as Rain and Blood, he's got so much feel playing drums on this album, in fact, his drums might make this album, in fact. I don't know. This album rules. You should listen to it. And number one on our list. What a surprise. What a shock. It's Slayer's Rain and Blood from 1986. And yeah, this is the best Slayer album. Um, yeah, this is the best Slayer album. In fact, this was the first album I ever heard from Slayer. I'll never forget it. I was just starting to get into heavy metal. 
And, you know, I knew Metallica, I knew Megadeth and stuff. And I was at uh, Schaumburg Library looking for new metal bands to listen to. And I'm, I'm just going through the tape, just, you know, going through the tape, just looking for cool album covers. And I come across this crazy album cover. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, Slayer, let's give these guys a try. I brought it home. Oh, my God. Dude. I like, the first time listening to it, I like, I like covered one eye. I mean, it was like, it was terrifying to me as a, as a young child, you know, and, uh, but I couldn't stop listening to it, and then it'd be over, and I'd be like, I don't want to listen to that again, and then I'd put it on again, and I'd listen to it again, <laughs> so yeah, this is, this is definitely, not only the best Slayer album, but this, this might be probably the best, is it the best Thrash album or something? I don't know, it's one of the best metal albums of all time, for sure. It is absolutely groundbreaking. Um, you know, they, they took 10 songs and scrunched them into 30 minutes. The playing is some of the most innovative, ridiculous guitar playing ever, especially the rhythms and the riffs that they invent. Um, you know, the drums fit with them perfectly. The lyrics are like bone chilling. And the reason they're bone chilling is not because they're so vulgar. It's because they're so eloquently put together. I mean, the writing on the lyrics is masterful as you go through them, the way he's able to get things to rhyme and, and then at the same time he's able to like make points but they're not like crude vulgar points they're intelligent well thought out points that really really make you think and and kind of drive home slayer's ongoing theme of you're all going to hell <laughs> you know and uh, as as musicians you know i think that that musicians need to be accurate reflectors of the cosmos around them, you know, and kind of show really, you know, what the musical force is saying. And I think Slayer does that beautifully. This entire album sums up the state of the world and the state of politics and the state of humanity. And really, there's nothing new under the sun. It's been like this for thousands of years. And it's almost like we're sinners in need of a savior. Hmm, imagine that. Anyway, so Slayer, Rain and Blood, best Slayer album of all time. Thank you for watching. Slayer's great. Slayer!